Today we're gonna to be looking if an Amazon PBS 14 compares to an actual PBS 14. Just to give you some comparison, this is a $200 night vision monocular. This is a $2,700 night vision monocular. These can range from anywhere for $2,000 to about $4,000, depending on the quality you get. And we're just gonna go ahead and compare the two and see if it's really worth spending the thousands of dollars or if you can save some money and get something like this. If you find my content helpful and entertaining, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell. Very close to 100,000 subscribers and I really appreciate all the support you all show me. The sponsor of today's video is Brownells. You can use code TA10 to save 10% off orders, $150 or more. Highly recommend you take advantage of that because you can order pretty much everything on their website. They have tons of stuff and I wouldn't be able to do a lot what I do without them. So use that discount code, save some money on your projects and let's get right into the video. As you know, I'm not into wasting anybody's time, so I'm gonna give you guys the answer really quickly. Uh, no, they do not compare. The $200 binocular is not nearly as good as your uh, expensive real night vision. You're gonna get a lot more quality and everything with this one than you're gonna get with this. I'm gonna show you guys a ton of B-roll through this video, uh, but for those of you that just want the quick answer, um, you get what you pay for. Uh, if you're gonna spend the $200, you're gonna get $200 of quality. If you're gonna spend the two to $5,000 upwards to $10,000 on night vision, uh, you're gonna get that quality as well and you'll see from a lot of this B-roll. But in this video, we're gonna be uh, going over where they do compare and where they kind of fall off and going over some other night vision questions as well. I'll give you guys a rundown on my helmet a little bit later in the video. Uh, this piece right here, um, for those of you that are wondering, uh, is up here because I've been testing this from Streamlight. It's this cool little light. Uh, it's actually supposed to go here on the side. I'd take this light and put this here, but in the moving process, I have not found everything in the gun room quite yet. Uh, so the little pieces that attach here to the side to allow me to put it on there, I uh, can't find right now. So for right now, it's living right there, uh, but that is something new that I'm testing. So I'm gonna show you a lot of B-roll between the two, uh, looking at the same location. Now, when I show you some B-roll, it might be really dark, and that's because it is your cheap Amazon uh, night vision looking at the same location as your PBS 14. Uh, and the problem is, is this just doesn't do a really good job at really, really dark areas where this one can see, this one does not. So if it's like B-roll of just not seeing anything, don't think that like the camera's broken, or I'm like, why are you showing me a blank screen? It's because I'm just showing you exactly what you can see through both of these at the same location. So I tried to pan them in the same way and show the same spots, just so you could get a really good comparisons for those of you that might not believe me and say, well, you know what, it's just as good. Uh, the, the answer is no, it's not, it's not just as good. But the first thing I noticed when I got this PBS 14 uh, knockoff out of the box is the build quality is actually fairly good. Uh, the weight is nice. Uh, the J arm here actually looks and functions fairly the same. Uh, the J arm that came with this one was plastic and, and kind of crappy. This one's plastic and kind of crappy. So there wasn't a ton of difference there. Uh, the big differences is like the plastic quality. You can kind of feel a little difference. And this eyepiece is absolutely garbage. Like it almost doesn't even like form to your eye. So I don't love that. But again, it's, it's pretty cheap. Uh, and the way this clicks on, um, is a little bit different, but for the most part, the eye test, it kind of passed in the sense that I was expecting a lot worse. So this was only $200, uh, which is actually still a decent amount of money because you can get a really nice flashlight for one of your rifles, or you can put that money towards a nicer optic for your gun. So uh, $200 is no small price tag. It's still a lot of money uh, that you potentially are putting towards this and just wasting if that's what you're kind of trying to go after. Fortunately, that about does it to where these actually compare because uh, past that, there is no comparison. Uh, you're, you're looking at a small screen. It's like a digital display inside of this. So you're you're already taking away half your vision uh, by looking through this uh, monocular. And then inside of the monocular, you're not just seeing a circle, which is what you see in your normal night vision, which gives you a little bit larger field of view, although you still uh, have issues with depth perception, which is one of the problems with uh, single tube night vision. Uh, you also are now looking into a smaller size screen that is also zoomed in. So you have a zoomed in look of a small screen and it's really, really bright. Uh, I almost could use this as a flashlight when I was turning it around and using it. Uh, I might be able to show you here. You might be able to see it in there, but it is really, really bright. Now night vision obviously gives you a green hue, but it's not something I could like show on the ground, which I'll show you some B-roll, but it's really hard for the camera to pick up because the camera doesn't pick up things like dimly lit super well. It likes to autofocus. Uh, but I can almost use that as a flashlight as I was walking around at night because it was so bright. And the problem with that is when you're running this, it completely destroys your eye's natural night vision, uh, which 
which your night vision uh, normally does that, and it's not a problem, but this does it worse because it's so bright. Uh, it, it takes a little bit longer for that to come back and be able to see again. And that is one of the benefits to running a single tube opposed to a dual tube is because you still have one of your eyes for your natural night vision. So if you have to rotate this out of the way or you close this eye and you start using your natural eyes night vision, then you can still kind of see it without having to uh, take this off and then wait for your eyes natural night vision to come back. Now where this really starts to fall off and uh, become a giant dumpster fire is the fact that uh, in the dark areas where you want night vision, this just doesn't pick up. Uh, if you're looking at a decently lit area, it wasn't terrible. It, it was usable. It was something that I would be like, okay, well, I could at least use this. But uh, I would look through it and then I would pull it off and I'd, I'd open this eye and look. I'd be like, oh, wow, I can actually kind of just see by myself. So what's the point of using this? Uh, so really where you would want to use night vision, this isn't super useful. That's where you're gonna to wanna to get your actual PBS 14 or your actual night vision unit because you're able to see in the dark areas that you wouldn't be able to normally see. That's the whole point of night vision is to be able to see in the dark and be able to uh, operate while other people can't see. And with this unit, you just can't do that. So long story short, you get what you pay for. Is night vision really expensive and probably too expensive? Yes, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's silly that to get into night vision, you're looking at like a minimum of $4,000 to get into a decent setup with your helmet and your IR and all that. Uh, and you're looking up upwards to ten dollars to $20,000 uh, if you get some nicer, more quality stuff. So I think it's ridiculous uh, how expensive it is, unfortunately. But it's where we're at right now. And if you wanna get into it, you're gonna have to spend the money if you wanna get the good quality stuff. So if you want this and you're dead set on like, I have to have night vision, uh, but I only have $200, I'm telling you, I don't recommend it. I think it's a horrible idea. And what I envision is you will buy this and then uh, six months later, you're just gonna spend the money on actual night vision because you're still gonna want it. And then you're just gonna spend the money and now you're gonna be $200 uh, farther back than anybody else that would have just uh, bit the bullet and bought the real night vision in the first place. So uh, don't get tricked by it. It's cool, it looks neat. Uh, your buddy, the Airsofts might have said, okay, it's just as good, but I'm telling you, it's not. Not if you're actually gonna use it. If you're gonna use this just for fun to go out in the range and just show off and be like, hey, look how cool I am. Maybe, I don't know, that's up to you. But if you actually wanna use this stuff in a real purpose or real application, get the good stuff. Uh, I have a video here on night vision, kind of the cheapest route to go. Uh, if you guys are interested, you guys can click that link and take a look at that video to, to help you see, you know, kind of where the minimum is. Again, it's not cheap. So if you, if you don't have a purpose for night vision and you, you really aren't going to use it, don't spend the money on it because it's not only just the night vision. You have to buy the helmet. You have to buy the IR devices. It gets really expensive very quickly. Uh, so don't get tricked by the, the guys on Instagram that are like, look at my night vision look at my cool kit and look at everything I've got. You have to buy everything I have to be just as cool. You don't. I would rather see you spend that money on uh, equipment that is really good and good quality and the training to use that equipment. It's more beneficial and it's gonna work better for you and the other people that you might be potentially protecting or whatever you're doing with that firearm or training. Is night vision really cool? Absolutely. Does it have its benefits? 100%, but uh, I just don't wanna see people spend money where they don't need to. I have the ability to use this at work if I need to, um, but realistically, even in my sense, I don't use this nearly as much as uh, I thought I would. So when I originally got this, my mind, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna constantly use it. I'm gonna go out and do night shooting all the time. Uh, but the problem is, is a lot of the people I shoot with do not have night vision. So it's not very fun for them to go out with me and shoot with night vision when they're running white lights and I'm running night vision because when I shoot, all you hear is my uh, suppressed AR going off every once in a while and potentially me hitting the target. And then for me, it's not very fun because if they're running white lights, then I can't even use this. So it's not very fun if your friends and people you shoot with don't have night vision. So in that sense, not super cool. I'm glad I got into it. It's cool. It's fun, but it's just very, very expensive. So I hope that answered your guys' question on do these compare? Is it worth the cost of night vision? Should you just cheap out and try to go this route? Because there are some things that you can buy a little bit cheaper and get by with, or um, you're just spending the extra money for the name. So now let me quickly go over my helmet setup. So I've got a Surefire flashlight here, this one that you can switch from white light to IR, and it's super beneficial for those really dark spots or down in a basement where you can't uh, have any of that ambient light to help you with your IR device or your night vision device, so you can turn that on and be able to see at least with that IR uh, light. Only downfall is the battery runs out ridiculously quick, but uh, it's kind of unfortunately the name of the game when you come with those kind of things. But uh, it's really nice because it, it rotates, it sits pretty flush, it's very small and compact. Uh, but so far, I really like this light. Uh, I have Walker here in protection. Should I put Peltors on? Absolutely. Is it worth it? Probably. Um, but I did this modification 
probably two, maybe three years ago um, to my helmets. It's just a really cheap way to do it. I have a video on how to do this if you guys are interested on having hearing protection on your helmet without spending oogle amount of money. Um, again, it's probably one of those things that's probably worth the cost, but it wasn't something that I decided to put the money in at the time. Got a counterweight here, just got some extra batteries in there because with night vision, when you have uh, everything extended here, uh, it, it tends to weigh pretty heavy on the front. So then uh, there's nothing on the other side. Coming around here, got a Wilcox mount. And then, which are, the night vision itself is ridiculous. Like these mounts are, are so expensive. I have a noise fighter mount here, and this is something I recommend to everybody that has a PVS-14, and here's why. So your normal PVS-14 on the J-Loop is gonna stick out a ton, and when you're walking, it can get hooked on stuff and yank your helmet back or rip your night vision off and break it. Uh, with this mount, it has a much more adjustable option. So you're able to put this down over here and then rotate it down. It sits a lot closer to your helmet, as you could tell. And another really, really cool feature is you can rotate it from your right all the way to your left. So if you want to have it on your left eye, you switch it over. If you're like, okay, I now want it on my right eye, you can switch it over just like that. Very, very useful mount. I've had a lot of success with this. So then you can come down here and then you bring it down to where you want it. Then again, you can rotate it back over. So you're able to rotate this from eye to eye, which I think is such a useful benefit. And then when it's time to store it away, you're able to put everything down so much closer and does not become a snag hazard and break your neck. If you guys have any questions about the helmet or just night vision in general, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to help. Hope this video was helpful. As always, my goal to help you guys spend your money in the best way possible. And if you guys are looking to help out the channel, things I do here, there's a couple ways to do that down in the description. There are some discount codes from companies that I personally trust that you can use to save some money along with a link tree. You can use those links to purchase anything from different companies. Anything you purchase does help out the channel and I really appreciate that. If not, I just appreciate you guys liking, sharing, subscribing, hitting that notification bell and being active in the comment section is always helpful. A couple companies that support me and the things I do here, Howitzer Brownells and Hold Up Display. Hold Up Display makes the racks behind me. Howitzer donates 5% of proceeds to charity, which they've donated a ton of money, over a million dollars, and they make amazing apparel. I wear all their stuff all the time, and they've collaborated with me on my own t-shirt. Brownells, you can use code TA10, save 10% off on our orders of $150 or more. Highly recommend that you take advantage of that. Other than that, guys, thank you so much, and I appreciate you all.